Welcome back to Rockstar 101. His name is Brandon. He's the DJ. His name is Shim. He is the Rockstar Classes in Session. And today we got a bunch of things we're going to talk about. We have uh, Twitch. I am now an affiliate on Twitch. I'm a big deal. If you knew that, I'm a pretty big deal. I'm now an affiliate and I'm ready to take over Twitch. So we're going to get to that. And in the last episode, we were also talking about the uh, diamond albums that exist and Billboard ranked the top 10. So we're going to go through those top 10. Plus, we also have some questions. Um, I received one on Twitch, and then we also have some Rockstar 101 questions. There's a bunch of things. We may or may not get to it all. Who knows? Shim, what do you want to start with? I want to start with the top 10 Diamond albums. I want to, I want to do the countdown and know what happened. All right. So we're going to hop into the old top 10 Diamond albums right now. But before I do that, I do want to thank our supporters of the podcast. If you want to become a supporter, just head to anchor.fm slash Rockstar 101 and become a supporter. Help us out. Help us out. We like that. It's good people. So this was from 2016. So if there's been a Diamond album since then, obviously that's not even going to make the list. So that's, um, yeah, I don't think so. What was the last Diamond album was, um, it'd probably be Adele. Adele went Diamond. I'm I'm looking up Diamond albums here. I'm I'm seeing what is actually, there's 92, you know, this is from 2016 again. Good Lord. Oh no, I don't think there was a Diamond album in 2016. You're saying this poll was done. No, yeah, the poll is from, or the the, the rankings, I should say. Let's go from 10. Let's find out what number 10 was. And what was Diamond again? That was more than 10 10, million? 10 million. Oh, snap. Yeah, there's There are some albums that went like triple Diamond. Like I think, um, although Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill was the highest selling by a female artist but that was worldwide it was over 30 million worldwide i'm not sure if it was 30 million in the states oh i could find that right here she sold the jagged little pill sold about 15.5 million in the states in the so states diamond yeah cool um and then there was one two three four five there's six total um diamond out al- or i'm sorry uh albums that sold more than 20 million copies okay you know what? Let's let's start there. Actually, before we get to this Billboard top ten, I want to see if you can uh, how many you can list off that sold more than twenty more million than 20? copies in the United States. Yeah. Okay. Well, definitely Garth Brooks has got a couple of them, right? Garth Brooks does not have a single one. He doesn't have a single one. I would have closest thought Garth he, Brooks. Okay. Closest he has come was uh, eighteen million, and that was No Fences. Okay. I'm gonna. T- I'm gonna. Okay. I'll take a couple of guesses. Uh, Thriller. Thriller is on the list. Yes. Right, that so is number got... two. It sold 33 million copies. Damn, dude. Can you believe that? It, just in the States alone. Okay. Yep. Uh, so there's one, there's one that has sold more than that. There's one that sold more than Thriller? And in... one, and it's the band that's in there twice. Creed? No. With Creed, 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 no but, but the, when I heard that Creed went diamond, I was like, oh, they're just... Okay. <laughs> They're just giving them away now. Um, well, there's a, we'll go through some bands on here that 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 got some of like them. Like there, um, there was there was a there was a a a couple of months when I think it was Human Clay and I heard that Creed was shipping a million units a week. It mm-hmm. was big news. It was big news and it was like a million units a week they're selling. Like that's how big that people forget. You make fun of Creed, but they were just everywhere. That song was number 1 for like Half a year wouldn't die anyway. Yeah, um, that one sold. Uh, Human Clay sold almost twelve million copies. Okay. So then, if it ain't Thriller, no, yeah. So Thriller was number two, was number and two. one band is on there twice. This band, it's a band, holds the number one and number three. Sorry, three spot. What band is bigger than? Oh, Guns and Roses. No, no Guns, Guns and Roses is so close. They're at 18. They're tied with Garth Brooks, 18 million. What band is bigger than than Michael Jackson? And it's the, the number oh, the one Beatles. is the greatest hits album. Is it the Beatles? It's not the Beatles. Oddly enough, it is not the Beatles. Now I'm stumped. Hold on. Because I'm sure Elvis Beatles, has got one, right? Beatles top selling is you have uh, the Beatles. From 68, you've got um, Abbey Road from 69. Those both sold 12 million copies. Okay. This is driving me insane. What band is bigger this than is Bloody Michael me. Jackson? What? It's. I said this is fun for me. Um. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you're having a good time. Uh. No. Let's give me, just give me one say more when this. Give me, give me one more minute. Okay. okay give me a hint. Right. Give me a hint. Give me a hint. Give me a hint. Let's just say hell had frozen over. 
No way. Jesus, could what you hear that? that? Noise? Sounds no, like I, a goddamn I heard, head I of elephants on my second floor. No, no. Somebody stomping around upstairs. Jesus, like I want to say meatloaf. No. Oh, okay. So then it's if hell is frozen over. Yeah. It's not Sabbath. Nope. Okay, I'm. I'm There's two hard rock bands in here, though. Well then, wait. It's, it's is not it this a, one. It, hell is is it a hard rock band? No. But it, hell is frozen. I consider it a rock band. This is just eating you alive, isn't it's it? You ready to get through this? We got we got to get through some stuff fun. here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, okay, come on. Okay, wait. Give me one more hint. Give me another hint, because now it's driving me nuts. I'm gonna get it. One come more on. hint. One more hint. Come on. I think pretty much every member of this band went on to have a pretty successful solo career. Uh, that's the Beatles. Um, every member of this band went <laughs> on to have Beatles. a successful solo career. I'm trying to think. I, I, I'm trying to give you a name that doesn't. It's not a dead giveaway, but if I right. give like, of the top over. three, what is this gonna? When you tell me, I'm gonna f kill myself. They had a tour called the Hell Freezes Over Tour. Because I back when know. they broke up, they said for us to get back together, hell will have to freeze over. And then they got back together and it was called the Hell Freezes Over Tour. And there's Floyd? people who are hearing this and they're like, they're yelling at you right now. They're like, for the love of Christ, Jim, <laughs> I'm sorry. it's the it's Eagles. Gonna... Oh. It's the goddamn Eagles. Uh, sorry, sorry. I told, I've told you with this stuff, the Eagles never made it to Australia. I, don't, I didn't oh. grow up with that stuff. If you had said it, I'd be like, of course, I didn't grow up with the Eagles. Hotel California gets played every once in a while, but we do not have... Okay. Okay. All right. So the Eagles have the biggest selling album in history in the States. It it's their Thriller. greatest hits. It, yeah, it's their greatest hits album. 71 to 75. It's sold 38 million copies. Jesus. And of course, there's some fluctuation here. Thriller has sold 33 million copies. And then the Eagles Hotel California has sold has sold 26 million copies. So those are the top three. There's still three more that have sold over... 20 million copies okay. and two of them are i would say hard rock slash pretty heavy get heavy bands okay so there's, there's three bands that we haven't they're bands they're not solo artists uh yeah they're all bands the top these are the other three that have sold over mm -hmm. 20 million okay bands uh all right i'm gonna hum okay this is what we're gonna do i'm okay. gonna hum i'm gonna hum yeah, this, so gonna this is the fourth band okay <laughs> Nothing. Try again. <laughs> oh, ACDC. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. Back in black. All right, back in cool. black sold 25 million copies. Okay. All right. So then the, number five on this it's list. It's funny that the stops is what gave it a. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's because so, it's so distinct. Like, that's arguably one of the most recognizable yeah. guitar parts yeah. of all time. You could play um, that rhythm with any other type of. Any other, any other chords and it would still be back in black. I've written chord progressions that are like, nah, this works really well with the melody, but just because it goes, they're like, no, that, the first part's too much like back in black. It sounds exactly yeah, like because back in black. Because it's just those three notes. Is, yeah, that's it. Dun, da, 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 that's da, it. Da, da, da. Game over. <laughs> All right, so this next band here, um, I'm trying to think of which song. Okay, here you go. I'm going to hum this one for you. Are you ready? <laughs> Wait a minute, I know that one. Is it Aerosmith? No. Um, do, you want me to sing, do you want me to do a second song? Oh, here? it's Led Zeppelin. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It is Led Zeppelin 4, which Excellent. has sold. Hold on, where did it go here? Led Zeppelin 4 has sold 23 million copies. And then number six, I don't really feel like uh, humming them, but it was Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood Mac is, uh, they sold 20 million copies with their album Rumors. And then right after that, next on the list, it's the two that you thought, it's Guns N' Roses and then Garth Brooks. So moving on to the Did top Guns N' Roses here. sold more than Garth Brooks? Uh, it's It's got them at the same at about 18 million. <laughs> For Garth Brooks, well, I mean, Garth <laughs> Brooks, it's that. the one album. For I mean, I'm pretty sure with all of his albums combined, he's outsold. Um, yeah, I had this with, you know why? Because I remember when we used to go to Capitol Records, you'd, you'd walk in the back door and there'd be this wall of... Um, Garth Brooks uh, stuff? Uh, well, no, no, a wall of platinum records for Diamond. There was Diamond mm -hmm. albums. And there was MC Hammer, 
There was one for Cher. Uh, some, whatever it was, there was like there was like one for a bunch of different artists, and Garth Brooks had three. And I remember mm-hmm. being like, because because. I didn't. I'm not in the country, and Garth Brooks didn't really happen over in Australia unless you were in the country. Mm. Uh, and I was like, "Really, that guy?" And that was when I started to learn about like, "Oh no, he's like the biggest legit holy sh- like forget about mm-hmm. it." But I didn't know because I didn't grow up with it. So that was, and I just assumed he had more in that high end thing. But he he just had. I mean, little old Garth Brooks. He only has several single diamond albums, I guess. Oh no, he's he's got. Uh... No Fences, which was released in 1990. That one sold 18 million. Uh, some of the other rock bands here that have sold more than 15 million copies of an album. You have um, Metallica, the Black Album, 91. That one's, uh, that sold uh, 16, over 16 million albums. You also have Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. That has sold 15 million albums as well. You can understand. And then if you, go- you can start to understand why Lars went ballistic at Napster when that stuff started to go down. Because when they're selling 16 million albums and then they see... Oh, we're selling like fractions of what we used to because all of our because everybody's fans, stealing our shit. Yeah, yeah, like you're you're on the the multi millions and millions and millions of albums, and you're seeing tens of millions of dollars roll in, and then like four, you know, three or four years go by, you release a new album and it goes, whoosh, and you're like, dude, yep. what the hell's going on? And now you're losing tens of millions of dollars from your investment. You're like, hey, and I remember the fans got really pissy because they were. The, of course, I mean it was back then. They just didn't want. They wanted. The they music saw it for as free. how dare how dare you you rich ass rock star yeah. piss and moan about yeah. losing out on money. But, and Fred Durst, remember, he jumped all over that. He toured sponsored by Napster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he played the other was, side of the court. It was genius. It was total genius. He became the fans. And if you didn't like Fred Durst and Limp Bizkit before, you were like, well, they're, they're at least they're pretty cool. Like they're they're they were right on the cusp of it. Metallica instantly became grandparents. Mm-hmm. The, and and it was and it was the cool thing was Limp Bizkit and that lasted like a year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> everybody was like, oh. But God. the thing that I think that people, this is just in Rockstar 101 discussion time. The thing that I think people don't take into consideration is that like, if you have built like if if you if there is a tangible thing right if you have built a store like a, like let's say you invented Subway. Mm-hmm. right everyone knows subway and it's like well subway subway it's just part of our life now whatever like metallica's music is like fucking you know if you don't know enter sandman give me a break so mm-hmm. if you were the person that actually went no i put my ass on the line for years and i started the first one and i nearly went out of business a bunch of times and then i had i i made a couple of other subways and started the franchise and they tanked and i nearly went bankrupt and you spent 20 years building this thing up and sweating and bleeding and then overnight like within a year or whatever, suddenly you've got all this money coming in and you've got your, and you're like, yeah, I built this for 20, 30 years. This is my legacy. And then immediately people are just coming in and stealing sandwiches. And mm-hmm. you're like, well, wait a minute. Well, well, but this, no, no, no. I, this, I this is my this. business. Yeah, this, this is my hard business. work. This, is, this like, is what I put yeah, forth every uh, other, effort to. Every other sandwich shop on the corners that just started up, they're like giving away sandwiches. It's like, I don't give a shit. I built this for 30 years. They're like, but in the last year or so, everyone's giving away sandwiches or selling them for a fraction of a penny. And it's like, well, so I can understand where they're coming, where they're coming from in that regard, but they went about it. I, I don't know if they, they went about it wrong in retrospect, but I mean, really, what do you expect them to do? Like, what do you expect them to do? They'd be like, our business is now, they were like, we're never going to see any more of our money from our records. That's what we do. We make records. Well, I don't even know if they went about it the wrong way. I mean, there's really there's no, no other, other way, way to, go to about do it. it. Yeah. So I don't the know only what... thing we could have done is like maybe gone to like maybe just your label or somebody like that and be like, hey, could you go argue about this rather yeah, than but... having Lars go up there? But you know, Lars want he had no problem. He wants the he wants the attention. Oh. He loves the microphone. He hates being behind that drum kit. Um, so yeah, so there's your, uh, anyway. there, there's your, your list of, there's a couple really odd ones here too. Um, I don't know about odd, but like the Def Leppard, they've got two albums that went diamond. Def Leppard. We've got hysteria, hysteria and pyromania, both, uh, over 10 million copies sold. Okay. Um, it see. just showed everyone in the chat on discord for the war room were like, they wrote, they were writing the Eagles in. I luckily, ah. I didn't check it, but they were like, it's the Eagles, right? Is he stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Led Zeppelin has a couple more. Led Zeppelin too, and Houses of the Holy also made it. Pink Floyd's The Wall is up there as a diamond album. Um, 
U2, the Joshua Tree, Van Halen. You've got Van Halen in 1984, which proves yet again that Van Halen is better than Van Hagar. Oh, I'm sorry, Darlene. Oh, Darlene. Darlene, what are I'm you sorry, doing Darlene, to me? Darlene. What are you doing to me? I don't know. I don't know because I I'm saw sorry. it on there I and I immediately think like, oh, I, I could poke it. that a little bit. I didn't say it, doll. I know. Okay. And they're gonna, they're, man, they're gonna send me hate mail. They're gonna, they're gonna not be my friend anymore. They're texting me right now. She's got her phone I in her hand. I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. Um, I take it all right, back. so let's. I'm just let's, saying that Van Halen made it there. So. Let's blast the socials real quick and then go to that question that you said on Twitch. Or Twitter, all right, so if you want to hit us up, you can find us over on. Uh, you can find Shim on Twitter at Shim Moore. You can also find him over on Facebook. It is just at Shim. You can find me on Instagram or on Reddit or even on Twitch at The Real Brandalorian. And if you're listening to this and you haven't checked out the Hollywood Rebellion yet, that's how you can go write a song with Shim. You can hang out with him. Um, it is just twitch.tv slash Hollywood Rebellion, and you can check that out. Really quickly here, before we get to the Twitch stuff, I do want to go through these top 10 albums uh, that Billboard had ranked, and these are the ones that have gone diamond. So this doesn't have really anything to do with the amount of albums sold. This is just the way that they have ranked them. Coming in at number 10, it was uh, Eminem's The Marshall Mathers LP. That's the one that was released in 2000. Was that the right? Okay, yep. Uh, then you have number nine, Madonna, Like a Virgin. Right. Uh, number eight, uh, The Beatles, The White Album. Yep. Uh, number seven, TLC, Crazy Sexy Cool. Man, everybody I knew had that album, Dude, man. That was a dope record. Everybody had that album when because I, I was right in that age group. Uh, number six, it's the it's the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. Um, number five is Nirvana's Nevermind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number four is Michael Jackson's Thriller. Number three is Led Zeppelin IV. Um, number two is The Beatles' Abbey Road. That's the one with the, the, the album cover. We're like, oh, this proves that Paul McCartney's dead. He's not wearing any shoes. Uh, and then number one was uh, Prince's Purple Rain, which has uh, gone 13 times platinum. Purple Rain. So there you That's go. That's going to be the All next right, Sister so, Fister song. we got to do a song that sounds like Purple Rain. Well, do it up. I mean, I heard Muff Diver. Damn good. That's a, that's a good it's take a on good, James Brown. I'll tell you that. It's a good song. It's a good jam. It's catchy. It's a good, it's a good tune, man. And if you, if you guys are listening to this and you haven't heard Muff Diver yeah. from Shim yet, it's, it's uh, a, Shim, it's Shim and it's a hit. Fister. It's, it's a side project. It's going to be Jamie a hit, started. dude. And uh, it's on the Patreon. So go ahead and sign up for the Patreon. You can download it right now. Uh, I can't play it now just because I don't know what the DMCA takedown rules may become. If it gets uplifted to a label, because Muff Diver is going to take over the world and Sister Fister is going to take over the world. It is. So um, it is. anyway, what was the question? Um, oh, somebody had asked me over on Twitch and they just kept, it was one of these people that uh, happened to stumble onto my, um, my Twitch stream and they asked, what is the best rock song of all time? Jesus. It's a wow. pretty heavy one. And That's so I, what, I, what I'm figuring here is I'm going to present the question to you now I don't expect an answer because this is going to take a lot of thought. It's something that you're going to need to stew on a little bit. There is no answer. But there is for you. Well, what is it for you? See, that's, I, I still don't know yet. Like, You've I've been kind of mulling it around. It. You've had time to think. Well, I figured we wouldn't give our answers yet. Oh, all right. See, you just... You, you just want me... To, you want to piggyback on my answer. No, I already pretty much have right. an answer. Oh, yeah, okay, I, because I, mean, I, I think I know what greatest, my greatest you, you define is it rock and roll song? Yeah, greatest rock song of all time. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have my answer for me. Because I, I was I, I was mulling around a few, and obviously with uh, either Freddie Mercury or Chris Cornell being as big as they are for me, Queen and Soundgarden, Audio Slave might be up there. I think Queen's probably going to win out. I think, you know, for greatest rock song of all time, one of the, the things that had popped into my head was Bohemian Rhapsody. Of course, Bohemian Rhapsody. Just because was of the, the, the pure depth of that song and the composition of it and the different levels and the, the, just the whole, the song as a whole, I think, is what really vaults that up there. Another song that I'm not sure I would give quite that status to, but it's definitely up there is ACDC Thunderstruck. Okay. Okay. Just because of that intro, man. That intro alone. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, what's the one song? Were okay. you thinking Bohemian Rhapsody I'll, too? No, or I'll explain to you why I think that my. It, here's the thing. There is no definitive answer as to what the best rock song actually is. It's the it's the who, an individual's idea of what the best rock song is. Yeah, that's why it it, it sparks debate. It's not I like it's not like hey, what's two plus two is. This four. is why I think that this song is the best uh, song. 
Um, because even though Bohemian Rhapsody is a very deep song and all the good stuff that you said, and then you've got, I mean, you've got We Are The, Cha- uh, we are the Champions, We Will Rock You, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff, right? You've got ACDC. I'd, I would choose Back in Black over Thunderstruck, even though that intro is pretty untouchable. But the reason that I would pick my song is because imagine that it's the first time you've ever heard rock and roll. Right? Imagine that it's like, imagine if your 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 dad or your mom says like, hey, we're going to take you to your first football game and get you your first, mm-hmm. or your first baseball game, get your first hot dog. This is what the experience is like. Or okay. they take you to your first rock concert, or they take you to the first movie or the first whatever. You go on your first boat ride. You remember that, and it sets the precedent. It sets a precedent. Okay. So lyrically, thematically, and musically and sonically, Welcome to the Jungle sets that precedent perfectly. Because the That's opening, a good pick. The opening line is, Welcome to the Jungle. Like if you like, welcome to rock and roll. Here's what it sounds like. Here's what it feels like. Here's what it looks like. Here's what we talk like. Here is everything in one song. And if you want to experience rock and roll, you're, they're literally opening the door and summoning you through and be like, "Yo, we got Queen, Aerosmith, ACDC, all the bands. We got everything." But mm-hmm. that, in terms of it being the opening, like the greatest like rock song, I think that like that one for me. Whenever that song comes on the radio or on the playlist, it just is immediately like, oh, that's what rock and roll sounds like. That's what rock Mm -hmm. and roll sounds like. There's no, like if you get Bohemian Rhapsody, you go, well, it's kind of a blend and it's deep and it's thematic. And then you hear like, um, smells like teen spirit and that's rock and roll, but it's grunge and punky. Whereas like Welcome to the Jungle, you can't say that sounds like anything except like that's fucking rock. That's rock and roll. That's a rock song right there. Like there's no like, you don't call it anything else. There's no. It, the, I I think that that would be my pick, and that's for that reason. And I think that's a really good pick, and I think it's a really really good reason as well. Because if you're trying to, because essentially what you're doing is you're trying to sum up rock with one exactly, song, exactly, exactly, and that's kind of what Welcome to the Jungle does. Yeah. Which so, is why it's the I most. Th- the, here, it's a little fun fact, right? <clears throat> Welcome to the Jungle, the first track of um. <clears throat> appetite, appetite for destruction. for destruction. If you've have you ever noticed what my opening, uh, the the openings to my records sometimes. No. So, the opening line of my first album, uh, "Welcome to the Real World," is "Welcome to the Real World," oh, which I wrote when I was right. seventeen. And then, uh, first off, uh, "Dressed Up as Life" is "Welcome to My World." And it's totally ripped from Welcome to the Jungle. It is that idea of like, I remember when I put that album on and it was when the singer says, Welcome welcome to My Nightmare by Alice Cooper. It's welcome mm-hmm. to this album. Welcome to this experience. Here we go. And that's, so you're a ripoff. <laughs> everything I do is a rip. Did you not hear that James Brown song? I didn't even claim to have it. Dude, any- I'm telling you, if you guys haven't heard it yet, man, it's a good, good, and Shim kills it. Shim kills it. Thank you. Kills it. Did, so do you, hold on. So just on a side note for that song for when, you know, it's finally coming out or when people get to hear it, which yeah, people on. can hear it over on your Twitch. I mean, Let it's me, on your Twitch, right? Yeah, it's on the Twitch. We play it on Twitch and it's going to have a lyric video and it'll, it'll be a regular cycle, but you can get it um, right now if you sign up to the Patreon. Well, there you go. So yeah, sign up so for sign Shim's up the, Patreon. Go to the and Patreon, you can get it. Do you think that you performed it? So one of the things that you told me before we started recording this was that Jamie had sent it to you and he made the comment, hey, I know this isn't quite in your wheelhouse. Yes, that's right. That's Do you that. think that that maybe pushed you a little more, gave you a little extra motivation yes. to yes. really go over top of the James yes. Bond? Yes, 100%. James, James Bond, James Brown. James Bond. <laughs> yeah, shaking. Yeah, 100%. Not sure. no, it was to prove a point. It was to prove a point. Don't ever, ever, ever tell me I can't do something. Ever. It's a big mistake. Oh, what should I tell you you can't do just so you'll do it? I've done things. That I don't I know. I'm going to think about. about that. I've done things that I cannot and never will talk about just because someone says, I bet you can't do that. You can't do that. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good song. It's a good song. It's a good song. So go check it out. If you go to twitch.tv slash Hollywood Rebellion, it's over there on uh, Shim's Twitch stream. So and what did you want to ask me about Twitch? I was going to say, just how is your experience coming along with you? It's been a couple of weeks now. You've been on Twitch. How are you finding it? You're settling in. Talk to me. Tell me a bit. I'm in. I, you know what? I'm digging it. I think the one thing that really helped. 
So I had always done the after buzz, which was, a, you know, it was a Wednesday show. I did it during the middle of the day. It was really, it started out as an AMA, like a morning show AMA where people could come in, they could ask us questions about what was going on with the show. Um, and then eventually nobody wanted to do it anymore. So I took it over and you can't really do an, MA, an AMA every week. So I just named it the after buzz right. uh, because it was after the Buzz Adams morning show. And um it just, it just got it got tiring. It got it got taxing after a while. I just didn't really have the time to do it. But something that changed that mood drastically was when you mentioned to me, "Hey, go you know look up Stream Beats on Spotify," and that kind of gives you like a background flow. And there was even a couple of times I live streamed last night. There was a couple of times where like a slow song came on, and I'm like, "Oh my god, yeah, like, I got to change this song." Yeah, yeah, this thing's putting me to sleep. But it's like having kind of that flow in the background. Um, one of the things that we'll do is I'll pop on a bunch of uh, royalty-free songs mm, yep. and we'll just listen to them and kind of critique and, you know, if it's something we like or something have we you don't found like or whatever. Any, and, have you found any royalty-free music that you've liked? Um, yeah, there's been some. I can't think of the names off the top of my head, but, you know, we listen to it on the Twitch stream. So if you go over to my Twitch channel, it's just, it's at The Real Brandalorian. Um, you can go watch those and we'll... We'll listen to some stuff. It's incredibly difficult to get copyright rock. You know what Com I mean? Copyright free rock. Yeah. Well, like most it. of it's. I'm going to make it. There you go. Yeah. Hey, and that's, that was another question. So people were asking um, why we had to play. So for the morning show live stream, essentially we took everything away. We took away um, all of the, uh, everything but the microphones and the telephone, essentially. So I have to play this copyright free music during the commercial breaks. And somebody had, had brought up the point and I was like, I, I got to ask Shim this was having you write music to play during commercial breaks. Yeah. So I figured it wouldn't be a big deal for you. I figured you'd <laughs> no, what sort of music track. do you want? Uh, rock and roll, baby. You just want, rock some, and you roll. Just want some, you just want some royalty free. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, I'll put it together. Uh, can you stream it off Spotify though? When you do it? Do you, have to stream, uh, yeah. do you have to load it in or you can stream it off Spotify? I mean, I prefer to load it in, but I could essentially just do it off of Spotify. If you stream it off Spotify, then uh, it'll bring the spins up and that's good. So that's good. Yeah, that'll be a good deal. Oh, he no, absolutely. Yeah, put it on Spotify and I'll just let the computer run. It's at least five hours for the show and I'll just, I could let it run after that. I could run 24 hours a day. That's what I'm wanted. talking about. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking there about. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. That is how you do this. Yes. So yeah, so Twitch has been great, man. Um... I try to pot the, the things that have changed drastically from the after buzz is I try to do it in the evening time. Um, so when people are home, cause that was one problem. And, and when people can actually um, comment and uh, be involved in the conversation, because yeah, the problem is when you're doing it during the day, they're at work and they're busy doing other things. So I had a guy, had a guy from uh, Ireland tune in who was a cool guy. He would pop in when I was broadcasting. I think you mentioned um, that. And it's an, it's an interesting combination of people because it's people who have followed me from the morning show and it's people who have come over from Rockstar 101 or people who have come over from the Hollywood Rebellion. Yeah. So I got a nice mishmash of people there who um, maybe don't know each other. They can kind of converse and figure out where everybody is. Um, and it's it's been an absolute blast. And the fact that while my wife was teaching my kid catechism, um, and I could come back here and drink some beers yeah. and just talk to people. Yeah. Ah, it was great. I absolutely <laughs> loved it. I had an absolute blast. I, I look forward to doing this a whole lot more, man. So I, think it's gonna be I, great. I haven't quite, I haven't quite decided if I want to pop in video games or not, because it does give me an excuse to play video games. I think it's just figure out what works for you and your fans. As long as mm -hmm. your fans are digging it. I think as long as you do commentary, I make a point of like, if, and when I play video games, like um, whenever I die or finish a level, I stop and go to the chat and you talk for a couple of minutes and then you go back. If your whole thing is yeah. like just playing the game and not talking to no. chat, then it gets real boring for people. So no, that's, and, that, and the whole point would be, I, I need to find a game that would have me, um, I would be able to comment on people. There was a lot of people who were saying like, oh yeah, we totally watch you play like a horror game, a horror video game. And I'm like, oh yeah, I think I have a couple of them downloaded to my Xbox right yeah. now. Yeah. And that was, um, that was something I used to do with uh, a buddy of mine is that we would, I mean, we would play video games. We would meet up at like 8 a.m. And he was that dude that always had every system, whatever the latest Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox yeah, yeah, was, yeah, he yeah, had yeah, all of them. Yeah. And 
we would go down to GameStop and they would always have that deal where if you buy a used game, you get two for free or two half off or whatever those deals are. Right. So he and I, we would, you know, save up some money and because we were like 19, 20 years old. Right. So we would go down to the GameStop, pick up some games. And one point we got Silent Hill, which is a pretty creepy ass game. Right. We played that a bit. And what we would do is we would turn all the lights off oh, in the Jesus. like in the entire room except for the TV and we'd scare the hell out of each other. And then all of a sudden he told me about Fatal Frame. And if you've sure. never seen Fatal Frame, that is a horrifying and I mean horrifying game because it's that crap that scares me. It's that uh, like that Japanese style horror that's like the ring Oh, or um, I hate that stuff. or or the grudge where yeah, it's like yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. it's the pale white chick with the dark hair yeah yeah and she's got yeah. like, it's, it's and it's really ghosts. weird why is that so scary like you i don't think know about but it's it terrifying like, right if i walked in and happened to see my wife like half asleep in a long like and knowing that i'm like yeah you're here every day i see you all day every day but if she was just there half asleep and standing and just kind of like sleepwalking with her i would freak out for a second didn't like, i tell you when that happened with my kid Nah, what happened with your kid? Oh my God. So we were asleep, my wife and I, and gosh, it was maybe one or two o'clock in the morning. And I'm, I'm rolled over on my side facing the wall. Right. And my, my wife is next to the door. Right. And which I know is wrong. People are going to call me out on that because technically the man is supposed to sleep next to the door just in, in case, case the intruder comes robot. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can't do that because my shoulder's fucked up, so shut up. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I'm asleep facing the wall, and all of a sudden I hear, Mommy? And then my wife goes, and she and she gets started, and she, she jerks like, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, and she yeah. goes, Jay! Like, like she, and she's startled. She screams. Yeah. So that gets my heart going, and I turn around, and there's my kid, and she was half asleep. She was awake. Like, something had happened. I don't know if she wasn't feeling good. Maybe yeah. she needed to throw up or whatever it was. And and she's, and she's even standing with her head kind of cocked a little bit like this to the side. Oh, man. And she's got long black hair. Yeah, yeah. And it's hanging down. And she's got on, like, one of those, like, white sort yeah. of, like, pajamas. Yeah. She's the ring. And she's like, Mommy. And oh. so I can't see her face. <laughs> I can only kind of see the silhouette and the highlights <laughs> of her hair. Because the light coming in from the hallway, it's backlit her. So it's a yeah, silhouette. Yeah, so you're terrified now. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm surprised I didn't pee. Like, <laughs> I am, I'm shocked I didn't pee the bed. That's but, yeah, terrifying. that right there. And, like, you were saying, like, if you were to see your wife like that, I legit yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. saw my no, kid, no and it, it scared the hell out of me, man. Yeah, no it fun. absolutely scared the hell out of me. So now I go out of my way to, to scare her. Yeah, I do the same thing. I love scaring my kids. We'll talk about that oh, on really? the next episode. Yeah, we'll talk about oh, that yeah. on the next episode. Oh, we got to wrap it up. Good. We're over half an hour. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's wrap this up. Oh, coming up, by the way, we will have Wes Scantlin of Puddle of Mud. He's going to be coming up on an episode of Rockstar 101, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, we've gone through the socials. Uh, you can become a supporter if you would like. I also got to mention the beard struggle. If you have a beard or you have a friend with a beard, uh, husband, boyfriend, whoever it may be, maybe your wife has a fantastic beard. And you maybe. want to have it groomed nicely. Go to the beard struggle and use promo code Brandalorian, especially during the holiday times. You can get a nice big old fat discount. There's been a lot of people from Rockstar 101 who have bought it. They love it. Um, I need to get some of their testimonials. We can we can put that some, uh, stuff up. But go to the Beard Struggle and use promo code Brando Lorian. On that note, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, no. Let's uh, we'll talk about how we like to scare our kids next week. And in the meantime, have a great week. His name is Brandon. He's the DJ. His name is Shim. He's the rock star. Class. Boom. <laughs>